So I got myself a little bit of a Christmas present that I wanted to unbox and review and kind of talk about the reasons why. And it is this uh, Ryobi battery-powered uh, metal cutting bandsaw. And if you've walked through any Home Depot, you're probably aware that Ryobi makes a ton of tools that run off of their 18-volt batteries. I don't know how many there are. There's a lot. And I have a couple of them here. Not, not very many, actually. Uh, but I do have a, a few. And a few weeks ago, I was listening to an episode of uh, the Modern Maker podcast, and on there, Ben Ueda had talked about this tool and that they had used it, I think, out at the jo out at Joshua Tree or wherever the, the project area is that he, that he works on a lot. And it just kind of intrigued me as a way, because I, I already have, if, if you've seen my Swag Off-Road videos for their portaband table, I already have the Milwaukee porta band but of course I have the corded version. And when I got that originally, part of the reason was I don't have any other Milwaukee battery-powered tools. And I didn't really see myself taking that bandsaw anywhere, so the corded was fine. But as I've started welding and working with metal more, I've wanted to try to have some sort of a portable means of cutting more for if, uh, if there was an opportunity to salvage some cool old metal. I don't have a portable generator, so the porta band's out. I don't want to use a hacksaw, but I already have several Ryobi batteries. So when I heard about this, I thought, hey, that, that sounds like something worth investigating. So let's open it up, take a look, and see how it does. We're going to use the table of my bandsaw because... All right. manual, right, the tool itself, let's see what else, probably blades, so it looks like it comes with two blades, I'm not sure what the pitch is, but they it is a fairly fine cut blade, but most metal cutting blades are. So one of the big differences between this and my Porta Band, my Milwaukee, is the the cut capacity as far as this throw goes. I think this is two and a half inches. On my Milwaukee, it's like four and a half or something like that. I don't remember exactly, but it's it's considerably larger. Looks like it's got a built-in LED, which is nice. The My Milwaukee has that as well. And it really, it just kind of looks like a miniature version of the Milwaukee. So let's throw a blade on it. Pull this lever out to release tension. Okay, we've got the blade in. It's probably best to wear gloves. And of course, I don't have a battery in right now. I'm going to put the blade tension back on. So one thing that I do see different from my Porta Band, oh, there we go, is this bearing on the outside, like on the cut edge of the blade, which seems kind of odd. My Milwaukee does not have that. All right. And I've got my biggest Ryobi battery, the 6 amp hour, fully charged. Pop that in. A couple of other things I've noticed that are kind of neat. Um, so here, just above the trigger, it has a lockout switch, so kind of a safety. When If the lock is out to the left, then the trigger is blocked and you can't accidentally run the saw. But if you push that through, then... Sog comes right on, and that also brings up the LED as well. And it does seem to be single speed, which I think on my Milwaukee it is variable, but that's a small thing. And this this saw is only 
I think I I think it was $119, so it's it's pretty cheap. Another thing that's kind of neat is on the underside it has this hook on it. They call it a storage hook, so you can put it on the side of your ladder or wherever. A lot of the skill worm drive saws I've seen have that on it, so that's kind of a neat thing that my Milwaukee doesn't have. Now, in terms of overall build quality, um, it is definitely more plasticky than the Milwaukee, but it's also less than half the price. In fact, it's almost a third of the price. But I don't think this was intended to be like a full-on job site, toss it around in the back of the truck all day type of tool. It's more of a quick cut here and there. Um, so I, I think that's actually probably fine for its intended use. Another thing I like is that it's got kind of this rubber overmold kind of thing on the grips, which makes it really easy to grab onto, and it's nice and, and comfortable. And it's really not that heavy. I don't know what the official weight is, but it's, it's not that heavy. I can hold it one-handed fairly easily. Let's see how it cuts. All right, and here we've just got a rusty piece of, I think it's half-inch round bar. Let's see how it does. Not bad. Uh, not very loud, and it cut just fine. Probably a little slower than my Milwaukee would do, but again, this is not a heavy-duty tool, so I think that's just fine. I don't know what the battery life is like, but I imagine this would actually work out pretty well for what I want it for, which will mainly be, you know, if I if somebody has some scrap they want to get rid of that I might actually be able to use for a project, then I may be able to use this to cut it down to a more manageable size. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with it so far. We'll see how it does long term. Um, I still need to check and see how available the blades are. I think this may actually be the same size blade that the smaller Milwaukee uses, the smaller battery powered one, because I think there's two or three different ones. Anyway, that is the Ryobi uh, battery-powered metal cutting bandsaw, $119 at Home Depot. And uh, I like it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.